Hello everybody and welcome back to UK Diver. If it's your first time here, then just welcome. I'm not really very glad to be here, I've got to be honest. I'm pleased to see you here, but I'm not particularly glad to be here. And the reason for that is, is I've been set up by my VIP. So if you don't know, a few months back I started a Patreon account, link down below, and basically we've been having an online club night, me and some of the subscribers to the channel, and I've also set up a VIP night, a bit more of an intimate group. You get chat on WhatsApp, uh, a bit more access to me, and you know, we've been having a good laugh. So we were talking about this, yes, the Ross Kemp series, and we were talking about it, and some of the guys have watched it. I haven't watched it. The simple fact is I just don't watch a lot of TV and I didn't watch this because I knew what it was going to be like. Overhyped crap, basically. <laughs> so, um, so I've been staying away from it. Now, I know it's overhyped crap because I know Ross himself at the dive show said it was overhyped crap and he give the reasons for that, you know, that it's, it's, it's made for a broad audience, it's not made just for scuba divers. So it does have to have that sort of like over the top kind of Americanized kind of thing going on. Apologies to my American friends, but you do have a habit of smidge overhyping stuff. So I stayed away from it. So knowing my propensity for rants and getting upset about things, my VIPs have challenged me to watch the first episode of this and just give my thoughts on it. So there was a lot of talk about this, you know, do these kind of things encourage scuba diving in the UK? Do they discourage scuba diving in the UK? Does the, oh, I nearly died at nine meters kind of put people off? Or do people take it for what it is, where it's a bit of over dramatization? I mean, just looking at the photo here, um, I, I don't know what he's wearing there. Um, some kind of like weird kinky bondage wetsuit kind of thing going on, I don't know. But anyway, do you know, uh, I guess there's nothing else to do but get into it, isn't it? So there's a couple of things I probably need to let you know. Firstly, I've been told I'm not allowed to swear during the video, so that's gonna be a challenge. And secondly is I have a couple of bets on with my VIPs about the contents of this first episode because I know he's up in Scapa and I know who he's diving with, and we've got a few private bets. But anyway, if you want to get involved with all that, guys, there's only one way to do it. That's get yourself down to the Patreons, link below. Get yourself signed to the VIPs and get yourself joined in. But anyway, here we are, Ben, one of my VIPs. Let's, uh, let's get into it, okay? Thanks for this. Ross Kemp. And Ross Kemp. had an affinity with the sea, and in particular, shipwreck. Now I have an opportunity to fulfil a Whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. Scarpa flow, it's it's not scarpa flow, it's scapa flow, isn't it? Everybody knows that, it's scapa. Please God tell me somebody corrects this, poor lad. Like, Ross, when I release this video, I'm gonna tag you in it, mate. And all I'm gonna say is if some bastard didn't tell you that it was named scapa flow for the whole series, uh, you need to sack him and get yourself a new production research crew because yeah, it's, S-C-A-P-A, -A, Scapper. Um, oh, yeah, that's 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 probably gonna bug me for the whole program. But anyway, let's let's fingers crossed it's not scarp. Scarp is what you do when you get, get caught scrumping as a kid, isn't it? You scarp. <laughs> it's not scarper flow. Oh god, here we go. Right, okay, we're, we're we're carrying on. We're carrying on. Royal Navy. Easy access to the North Sea and the Atlantic meant this natural place to start, but I'm not very happy about it. <laughs> Why are you not very happy about it? Because I think it will be dangerous. Are you worried about me? Yes, I'm very worried about you. You've been worried about me for a very long time. I have, ever since you were born. <laughs> May I help you right off the door? Mrs. Mum's nice, huh? Ah, Chepstow. Responsibility, responsibility 
making sure you can put all this kit together safely and making sure that ultimately it works in the water. So, so guys, I'm just looking at the kit thing. What's the yellow strap thing? I don't get what that is. I mean, obviously the rest of it's just pretty, pretty standard kit by the looks of it. It's got two SPGs, presumably one of those for his pony that we just saw him put on. There's a what was a gas switching block, so I guess they'll be using the full face masks. So that's fine, but I don't get what what's the parachute harness for. Um, I don't know. Are we going down the? I'm a commercial diver route. Do they do they wear them? I'm not sure, but uh, if you're new to scuba diving, this is your first video you're watching. A, what a bizarre video to watch, but B, that's not normal kit. Anyway, well, let's, let's find out what's going on. My trainer is dive supervisor, Neil Brook. Dump the gas from your suit. With over 30 years of diving experience, there are few more qualified. He'll be running all my dives from the surface. He's a good learner. Yeah, okay, so um, that's weird, isn't it? Having like surface crew with like a full diver comm setup kind of thing. I don't know, is this TV required safety aspects? I don't know, kind of thing, but it is what it is, isn't it? Kind of thing. So if you're expecting me to get excited about that, probably not. I don't know, we'll see how annoying it gets. training dive I make a mistake and get tangled. <laughs> oh god here we go here we go yeah so he makes one mistake and gets tangled uh, you can see that shot there I'll just get a shot of it there so basically what he's got is got an octo with one of them easy air breathe things on that are in shite to start with uh, and it looks like he's got that on the line a line which i also must say is i've no idea what that's there for why is he tethered to the surface is this i, I, I just don't understand what that's about really um is it because he's ross kemp and should anything happen to him we, we or he came out of the water is this kind of some like weird commercial setup uh, that you have to have but you know the simple answer is is if he didn't have that line attached to him that's got tangled and then he wouldn't have got tangled in the first place would he so so much for safe commercial diving eh? but anyway we'll see if he survives this terrifying incident of getting tangled underwater i'm willing to bet he probably does Well done, safety diver. Diver one well? Yes. Diver one reports well. My first destination is Scarpa Flow. No. Oh. Of the British Isles. Scapa. This natural harbour has been used Look. as a naval base at the time of the Vikings, who gave the waters their name. So I need a local guide to help me explore. Emily? Hi, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. Welcome to Orbit. Thank you. Um. So he's using Emily from Scapper, which, you know, if you're filming a TV program, why wouldn't you? She's got the best boat up there. She's got nice accommodation. And more than that is she knows her stuff. She knows the wrecks intimately, and he's very passionate about them. Now, those that know me and those that are friends of the channel kind of thing know me and Emily didn't really hit it off when I was up there. But if I was filming a show about Scapper, that's the person I'd be going to. So it's no surprise for me to see her on here. Emily Turton gave up her career as an opera singer to become a technical diver. She's been exploring Scarpa Flow for over a decade in her custom-built dive boat. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go, guys. Right, custom-built dive boat. Couple of bets coming on now, and I'm willing to guess I'm going to win a few here, right? Win a few, right, let's, let's go, let's watch. win so that's it both my bets won guys so again if you don't know what i'm talking about if you don't know what i'm talking about you're just gonna have to get on the vips guy get on the vip group again link down below but yes thank you somebody owes me some money ha <laughs> ha connect me to my long lost relatives the 
tale of local loot reminds me of the reason I'm here. Right now, I've got to say, guys, <laughs> this bit where they find treasure caused particular excitement amongst the VIPs with some suggesting that it may have been placed for us to find. So I'm very interested to see where they find it. I mean, it's clearly close to the F2, but exactly what they find and more importantly, how buried it is. Now, bear in mind that this wreck, as has been said earlier, is like getting on for 80 years old. Uh, even if it was just laid on the surface, it's going to be covered in a fair amount of detritus. If you've been fettling for spids, it's normally a bit of a fettle and you normally have to wait if things are on the surface because we've had a bit of weather or something that sort of scraped all the sand off or all the sediment or, you know, the tides have took it away. So it'd be quite interesting to, to see. So let's go see exactly what Ross finds and more importantly, how he finds it. We've got a whole collection of stuff here. Mm, uh, that's that's convenient. Now, I just want you to bear in mind, guys, that th this site has people diving on it all year for like you know since since the beginning of scuba diving. Okay, the chances of there being a whole heap of stuff just miraculously found are, I would suggest, and a few of the VIP suggest as well, slim to none. I mean, just looking at this this shot here, you know, it looks like we've got like a shell case and just lay on the surface. It looks like we've got some bits of crockery just laid on the surface. And, and more than that, you know, the, the nice white shiny stuff. So not even like difficult to spot. So the chances of those miraculously being found while <laughs> Ross is underwater, I agree, are slim to none. But however, even if they have been placed, okay, again, I take the fact that this is not so much strictly a documentary on how you'd go about finding these things as more an entertainment documentary. So, you know, these, fact, these, these items probably were found just where they lie in there you know in this kind of patch uh, and they are what they purport to be uh, okay they might not have been found on this dive but they would have been found on a dive very much like this so it's probably if you think of it more of a recreation than anything i think that's the right way to take it so i know for us divers it's a little bit laughable that you know well this is an absolute treasure trove of stuff as you just said but you know for tv purposes it's not particularly interesting is it where you go and say oh i did the f2 we had a look for some stuff and we didn't find anything so i do totally get it but again for the diving fraternity for you guys out there the uh, proper scuba divers you know don't think this is the reality because I don't think it is, okay? My opinion, it's my opinion only. It could have just been the look of the draw, I guess, but I don't think so. I mean, look at them. They're not, they're not even, like, mildly buried in the water. Someone's just been and poked them in, maybe. But anyway, it is what it is. So, yeah, I, I'm afraid I agree with the VIPs. This has definitely been staged, but I do totally understand why. So, anyway, let's get back to it and see what, what treasures Ross finds this time. <laughs> yeah, what are the chances of me finding it, Ross? Is it, that's amazing, isn't it?
Uh, fair play to him for that. It is, you know, I know a lot of people, again, not a massive rec fan by any means. Anybody who follows me knows that I'm more a fish and flowers kind of guy, not so much direct, but that is why we go diving, to see these things, because they're not behind a museum, they're not behind a piece of glass that they do not touch. If you want to go see these things, you want to touch these things delicately, be careful with them, not swinging on them, but you can go and do it, and that is one of the magic things about going diving and thinking about, you know, what you said about the people who are on these boats uh, that were doing these things, you know, brave slash stupid who knows but it was it was just part of the times wasn't it and uh, part of those things so yeah I do like the fact that he's, um, he's talking about that in, in the correct terms anyway so yeah um, a diver he is So we're diving block ships now, guys. I didn't do any of these while I was up there. At least the man's got a sense of humour, huh? Oh, you see, they're boring me now. Triple expansion steam engines. what they call a block ship if you don't know if you've not been up there and it was sunk to block up the channels to stop the u-boats getting in so this is you know it's supposed to be a documentary and they're kind of doing it backwards they're diving a wreck before they know what they're going on so it's a block ship it was full of stone it was sank there to like i say stop u-boats getting through there's none of this that you can't find with literally 15 seconds worth of searching on google i understand again you know from a tv point of view you've got to keep it entertaining but I totally understand why some divers are like, kind of like, this is just maddening. Just do your research. You know, you do your research before you dive on a boat. You know, it's almost like, um, you know, we're going down for the first time and they're doing some investigative diving kind of thing. Like, no, we, we know why they were there. So, but again, diving community versus the general public, I guess there's going to be a different in perception there. So again, I totally get why this is frustrating, but I think you just got to take it as it is. So anyway, carrying on. Here we go, he's gonna die. 16 meters, the tide's turned. Now, you can quite clearly see there's green light behind him, so why they <laughs> this way? Just go out the other way. I said that, didn't I? Stop flapping your arms. It's quite flappy, isn't he? When we break back into open water, I'm relieved. I'm diving deeper than ever before. Oh, thank God, that is it. So, um, thoughts really well it is what it is isn't it and uh, it was never going to be anything but it has to be a bit more dramatic than it normally is in real life and he had to find something so i do get my vip's 
upset from it from a diving point of view but again i know ross did say on the dive show when he did the talk that and he explained that how that's just how it is that's how tv works and he knows better than anybody overall do i think it's going to encourage more people into diving i don't really know i mean it does obviously give the historical background even if it is a kind of backwards way of doing it you know going down and asking all the questions that are blindingly obvious to anybody who's done i'd look at google and done a little bit of research or even looked at the site the scapa rec site website which is a fantastic resource i will leave a link down below so if you're thinking about doing a trip there or you want to know any more information about the rex of scapa or scapa in general to do with the world wars and the boats there then do link to that website because it is absolutely fantastic but i i don't know i don't know i'm kind of 50 50 i don't think it encourages people i don't think it particularly discourages people the people i know that go diving are always kind of um, how do i put this the alphas out there the thrill seekers the people that really want it so i don't think the uh, made up kind of peril and drama kind of thing would put those kind of people off i think they would probably get quite excited by it to be honest with you so i think you probably attract it more of the same to be honest with you those you know wilting flowers and risk averse cotton wool life kind of people they were never going to do scuba diving and i don't think they're going to encourage me to do a scuba diving in the uk either like i say that's it i'm not going to watch any more of the series guys so i'm not going to be doing any more comments uh, it is what it is it was reasonably entertaining for what it was good on ross for sort of jumping in and doing it he, he does seem to be respectful of the wrecks he does understand what's going on there kind of thing it's not quite as bad as some of the american stuff you know the the jonathan burge you know, oh he's getting in with sharks is he going to survive and it's like well yeah because this is now a longer program and we're, we're already three minutes in and he's not dead yet so it's going to be a crap series if he dies in the third minute isn't it so it's not quite discovery like Rah! you know definitely more of a british edge kind of thing so anyway yeah that's what it is guys it's available on the history channel so if you've got sky or you've got access to the history channel then check it out if you want quite interesting historical backgrounds if you can't be asked using google yourself it is what it is yeah that's it guys for this one and as always i guess i will see you not me watching tv because i can only imagine this must be pretty boring but uh, anyway i will see you as always on the next one <laughs>